everyone welcome back to the channel of ecoholics so in today's video we are going to discuss about various forms of production function so production function is one very important topic from the perspective of every economic exam but in spite of this fact students struggle in understanding the various properties of production function so if you continue watching this video i can assure you that this video is going to help you a lot in understanding the various properties we have for our respective production function let's just get into the video what is essentially a production function so production function is that equation why i'm calling it as an equation because it is going to be mathematical only so production function is that equation which brings out the relationship between our output and factors of production now we have two factors of production right we use labor and we use capital labor and capital we use for producing our output so how these labor and capital units are involved and hence they are giving our output that relationship is being told by the production function now in the beginning i mentioned that there are various forms of production function so why are there various forms because we classify the production function on the basis of the degree of substitution between the two inputs given to us now what's degree of substitution it basically means that when you are taking one more unit of one specific input you will have to reduce the input number of units of the another input so this exchange we are doing like we are bringing in more units of one input and reducing the units from another input is known as a substitution between the two inputs so production function is categorized in two different categories on the basis of this degree of substitution so that's what we have let's see what types of production function we have we have three forms of production function the one is cobb douglas production function which is very common very popular and all of you or most of you must know about that the another is ces production function which is also known as constant elasticity of substitution production function the third is fixed coefficient time now in this video i will be taking up the cobb douglas production function what are we going to learn in this video we will talk about what the production function is what are the properties how is it going to look we will also learn the interpretation of various parameters we have in our production function let's just go so as soon as the cobb douglas production function comes to our mind the next question which follows is is it going to be the production function for a firm or is it going to be for the industry so cobb douglas production function fits well for both the firm as well as the industry so it's not the case that you can apply it only for firm or only for industry and that's how the cobb douglas production function looks like f of lk which means that y is a function of labor and capital a into l raised to the power alpha k raised to the power beta now one very important property of cobb douglas production function is because the labor and capital they are coming in multiplicative form so both of them have to be not equal to zero so both of them have to be non zero because if either one of them will become zero the output will become zero so that's a very special feature of cobb douglas that both the labor as well as capital will have to be positive you cannot have you the one factor or one input cannot be missed out here in the cobb douglas production function now let's just learn what is y here when i write this equation y is equal to a l into alpha k into beta so what is y here y is known as output which you are producing a 
is the technical parameter. When I say technical parameter, it tells you the effect of technology on the output. L represents labor, whereas K represents capital. Now, what does alpha and beta represent? Alpha and beta represents the elasticity of output with respect to labor and capital respectively. Now, what does that mean? What does elasticity of output? So, I'm writing it here. Elasticity of output with respect to labor actually means. It tells you what will be the proportionate change or percentage change in output whenever there is going to be a proportionate or percentage change in L. So, for example, L uh, one thing, alpha and beta have to be strictly positive. Let's take alpha is equal to 0.5. So this means that whenever the labor will change by 1%, the output is going to change by 0.5%. So as soon as, let's say, you increase labor by 0.5%, the uh, by 1%, the output will increase by 0.5%. So that's what the elasticity parameters tell us, right? And after that, when we talk about the marginal productivity of labor and capital, the what is marginal productivity of labor? Marginal productivity of labor means that when you change labor by one additional unit, what changes come in the output? So what is the change in output when you change labor by one unit? So this is given by the derivative of y with respect to L. So what it is going to be? It is going to be A into alpha L alpha minus 1 K raised to the power beta. That's what we have. Now similarly, marginal productivity of capital means the change in output due to change in capital which means the derivative of output, the derivative of y with respect to k, which will be a into beta L raised to power alpha k raised to power beta minus 1. So what we have seen is that marginal productivity of either labor or capital is dependent on the L, that is on labor and capital as well. And if we do more mathematical uh, reasoning here, if we try to elaborate this, I can write it in terms of capital and labor ratios as well. So that's what we mean by marginal productivity of labor and marginal productivity of capital. Now, next to this, we talk about now alpha and beta. These are not just only the elasticity of output with respect to labor and capital, but they hold more importance than that what they are going to tell us. They let us know about returns to scale in a Cobb Douglas production function. What do we understand with returns to scale? So when you change the factor of production in some proportion, and when I say in some proportion, the change in both of the factors of production should be similar, it should be equal. So when the factors of production are changed by the same proportion, what changes come in our output. So what is the proportional change in the output? Output can change by greater than the change in inputs. It can change equally to that or maybe less than that. So on the basis of that, we have categorized our returns to scale into three categories. The one we have is increasing returns. The another we have is constant. And the third one we have is decreasing returns. All these three tells us that what will be the proportional change in output followed by the proportional changes in input. Increasing return says that change in output will be greater than change in input. Constant return says it will be equal and decreasing return says the proportional change in output will be lesser than the proportional change in the input. That's it. But how does alpha and beta lets us know about the returns of the scale? Let's learn this. So if we have increasing returns to scale, the sum of alpha plus beta will be strictly greater than 1. If we have constant returns to scale, alpha plus beta will be equal to 1. And when alpha plus beta are strictly less than 1, we get decreasing returns to scale. So that's how alpha 
plus beta the sum of alpha and beta helps us to know about such an important concept in cop douglas production function generally in cop douglas production function we take constant returns to scale also so now we are discussing the properties of cop douglas so these properties have been asked in various entrance exams let it be ies or let it be upsc economics optional and even if you are someone preparing for some objective based entrance exams for getting into some of the prominent institutes for doing your masters in economics you will be asked questions on the production function or related to production function so these properties will help you to solve a lot of numericals coming from the cop douglas production function so first is that usually we take constant returns to scale second elasticity of substitution is equal to 1 so how does elasticity of substitution is equal to 1 that is present for that we also have a video present with us you can go to our channel and can also watch the, that video but what is elasticity of substitution so it is given by derivative of log k by l with respect to log mrts all right now alpha beta they are elasticities of output with respect to labor and capital that is another property and again if one of the input is zero output will also be zero that's another property for our cop douglas production function now coming to the ratio of alpha beta have you observed this fact that alpha and beta are becoming really useful for us so alpha by beta ratio tells us about factor intensity now what do we understand by the word factor intensity so it tells the nature of the product that whether the product is capital incentive or capital intensive or labor intensive so if alpha plus beta is a higher ratio it means alpha is greater than beta which means that product the output you are producing it is labor intensive if alpha plus beta ratio is smaller which means beta is greater than alpha which represents that the product is a capital intensive product so this is another property of cop douglas production function i hope you will find this video useful if you like something specific please let us know in the comment section below subscribe to the channel for more upcoming videos on production functions and just share it with your friends also thank you for watching the video